are listening to an American Free Press podcast. Joining me on the line is Carl Swenson, the chairman of the Clayton County Republican Party in Georgia. Carl, thanks for joining us today. Not a problem, David. Not a problem. Carl, I was looking at an article online on the American Free Press newspaper's website, and it said that, well, at least the headline was, Obama has Georgia on his mind, court will hear eligibility case by the writer Pat Shannon. And at least according to the article, it seems like a Georgia court is ordering that President Obama appear before him. Before we get into that, Carl, can you, for the benefit of our listeners, let them know who you are and how you are involved in this matter? Who I am? Well, I am a voter, citizen of the state of Georgia. I'm the chairman of my Republican Party, and I'm actively involved in trying to get the word out about the true and correct definition of what a natural-born citizen is all about. Okay. And is there some confusion as to exactly what that is? Apparently so. It would appear that any time I have asked people that come to my shop or come in front of me, what the definition of a natural born citizen is, the pat response I get is, oh, well, born here in America, right? And I have to take my time and explain to them that that's only half of the equation. The other half is that you have to be born of citizen parents, not natural born citizen parents, just citizen parents. So having said that, And having never heard the media properly address this issue, I took it upon myself to try and A, enlighten the public about it, but more importantly, to somehow get this issue in front of a judge so that he can rule on it. That quest started for me a little over two and a half years ago, and I really couldn't get anybody in the media to pay attention to it. I couldn't get any of my Congress critters to pay attention to it. No local judges would pay attention to it. They didn't want to have anything to do with it because it was PC incorrect, and I am anything but politically correct. Right. (laughs) <laughs> so there's not a chance in hell I was going to let this go in any way, shape, or form because, as you know, for the past however many years, since 2002 or 2003, we've been in various states of war, and we've had our military putting their life on the line and in many cases losing that life, paying the ultimate price for this country. And the biggest problem I see is that they are taking orders that are only generated at the very top of the food chain, which would be coming directly from Canada. Candidate Obama. Candidate Obama has a loyalty issue problem. When I say that he is not eligible by virtue of Article 2, Section 1, Clause 5 of the Constitution, I do so stating emphatically that he has divided loyalties. His father was a British citizen, never ever a U.S. citizen, never officially domiciled in the United States even. He was here on a student visa, and he did end up having to be deported in 64, but was never a U.S. citizen. Therefore, Obama can never be a Article 2, Section 1, Clause 5 eligible candidate. So I've done a lot of things to try and get this out there. I've affiliated with a lot of groups. I started off by creating the first ever common law grand jury down here in Stockbridge, Georgia, where I gathered people from all over the state, 25 strong. And we heard evidence to the effect that there was issues with his status. And we found that he was guilty of fraud wire fraud, and several other charges related to his allowing others to put him on the ballot when he wasn't eligible to be there. That is what I carried to many judges, and after I did a couple of these, one here in Stockbridge, Georgia, the first, and then the next one I did was by assisting a group up in Ohio. They did theirs, and then the third one to happen was in Illinois. After that, a group called American Grand Jury stepped onto the scene and decided they wanted to give this a go, and they created the online grand jury system. And after, Lord, I think it was like 10 or so of these grand juries, they had one that was called the Super Grand Jury, and it comprised, I don't know, maybe 150 people. And I took that, along with another representative from the American Grand Jury, up to Washington, and myself and six other people hand-delivered these presentments to every member of Congress and every senator. We took it to the D.C. District Court and filed it with Judge Lamberth's office. 
I took it to the White House where the Secret Service wanted no part of it. They said they wouldn't take it. They surrounded me with about 10 or 12 different agents and tried to be intimidating. But at the end of the day, they did accept these presentments. And then I went from there over to the Pentagon and pretty much got the same treatment from the Pentagon police, where I guess they looked at me as some sort of radical terrorist or something, because as they were interviewing me, they did so with hands on guns. <laughs> you look like a jihadi. I guess. White-haired Norwegian, uh, <laughs> possibly a natural-born citizen. I haven't figured out whether I am that or not, because my father came over in the bowels of a boat from Sweden. So I still can't find any naturalization papers for him. So <laughs> the jury's still out on whether or not I'm a natural-born. But I am a citizen. I was born here in the United States, in Miami, Florida. I've just run the gamut. I've tried taking my stuff to every legal authority that I could, many sheriffs across the state, many judges across the state. None of them wanted anything to do with it. It was too much of a hot potato. And I started hounding my congressmen, my senators, and even my local county commissioners. I've put this out everywhere I can. I've been consistent over the years. And unlike a group that you have probably heard about before called the Birthers, I'm not about the Birther. I'm strictly about the natural-born citizen aspect of candidate Obama. Well, you call so, him candidate Obama. Why do you call him candidate Obama? Isn't he the president? Well, he may be your president. To me, he's still a candidate. Uh, the best I can say about him in using that term would be putative president. It's not been established that he is really even there legally, and I'm not going there right now. What I am doing is asserting that according to Georgia law, he's not eligible to be on our ballot. And I have done a lot of work to lead up to the case that is going to be in front of a judge on Thursday, January the 26th. That case is going to be heard on merit because we bypassed the standing issue by doing this at the state level, where at this state level in Georgia, we are guaranteed standing by virtue of the fact that we are A, citizens, and B, registered voters. I worked with the Secretary of State over the past two years to advise him of this issue. And again, more political correctness. They all just run to the high grass whenever they hear this come up because they don't want to have to deal with it. The standard response is usually, well, we'll get them in 2012. And, okay, sure, that's right. the way you feel about it. Well, guess what? We're now at 2012, and I'm going to get them. And here's how it's going to happen. We're going to have this in open court, and I can thank Brian Kemp, our Secretary of State, for, I guess, paying attention to me. I followed him all over the state, making sure he understood that the eligibility issue was going to come up, it was going to be challenged, and I was going to challenge it. I put this out there for everybody to see across the net in the hopes that others would do that, and whether or not I had anything to do with them doing their challenges, A, I'd like to think I did, but uh, who can say? You know, we're all in this battle, and all of us have been doing research right along. But I can say that Brian Kemp did me and the other challenges a good turn by establishing a court that would hear these challenges. And when they finally came down, and mine was submitted on November 26th or 28th, somewhere in there, when mine was submitted, and I took it and hand-delivered it to the Secretary of State's office, I knew that it was game on, and this was going to happen. And he assigned, gratefully, this judge that is going to this case, Judge Michael Malihi. And so far, all of the rulings that have come down, and there's been two of import so far, the first one was that he denied the defense's motion to dismiss because the defense was saying, you got to keep your nose out of federal business. Yeah, he didn't like that a whole bunch. And they uh, also said that uh, it was the electors that were responsible for it, and the state of Georgia had nothing to do with vetting the president. Well, I take issue with that, and so did the judge. So the next issue that came up before him that was of interest, and it doesn't apply to my case. It applies to the third of the three cases being brought. Orly Tates had subpoenaed President Obama to appear at this hearing. It's not a trial. It is a hearing. And the judge, even though the motion to quash that was issued by the defense team, said he's going to deny that motion and that Obama should, in fact, appear. Good job, Orly. I don't expect him to show up. But bottom line is this judge seems genuinely interested in dealing with the merits of this issue and helping us resolve it once and for all, which is all I have ever, ever asked for in this world. If I'm wrong, the judge will tell me I'm wrong. I don't think he's going to, because I believe that the evidence we will put forward on the 26th will prove conclusively and without a shadow of a doubt that the definition of Article 2, Section 1, Clause 5 of the Constitution is that you must be born on the soil to citizen parents. 
I have talked to my senators. I've talked to just about everybody. But one conversation of note was with Saxby Chambliss. And I asked him on a phone call about three months ago, Saxby, if Osama bin Laden had smuggled his wife, his pregnant wife, across our border for the purpose of having that child born on American soil, would that child be eligible to be president? And Saxby said, without skipping a beat, why, yes, of course. Now, if you look at the verbiage of this one stipulation, this one qualification in the Constitution, you'll notice that it's natural with a small n, born with a small b, and citizen with a capital C. Natural born is an adjective describing a certain class of citizen. Not every citizen can be in that class. It should be apparent to all that there's more to it than just being born on the soil. Because if so, why would they put that one place and one place only in the Constitution? My contention is that they did that to preclude the possibility that we would ever have a sitting president with divided loyalties. Okay. Now, in the Constitution, what does it exactly say? What's the exact language? Is it only two sentences oh. about natural-born citizen? Is it the one that says, no person except a natural-born citizen or a citizen of the United States at the time of the adoption of this Constitution shall be eligible to the office of president? And he shall have attained the age of 35 and must be a resident of the United States for 14 years. Yeah, that's all it says. So that's it. It doesn't say anything about the parent. Oh, no, no. Again, the Constitution is not a dictionary. The founders were all extremely familiar with the term natural-born citizen. There was no question in them. They didn't feel the need to expand on it in any way, shape, or form. It was very evident to everybody at the time what that term meant. People will say, well, it's not defined in the Constitution. Well, you're right, but any reasonable person, and I consider myself to be a reasonable person, would conclude just by the structure of the sentence alone that it is referencing a special class of citizen. Okay, so this isn't going to be a slam dunk here. I'm a glass half full kind of guy, and I do genuinely feel in my gut, in my heart, and in my mind that this is a slam dunk, that with what we will be putting forward to this judge, he will have no choice but to rule in our favor and keep Obama off this ballot. And I also believe that this will start a domino effect across this nation to keep him off other states' ballots as well. I know that there are ballot challenges going on in Alabama, in Florida, in Maryland, in Virginia, in New York, in California. California, at Arizona, and those are just to name the ones that I'm aware of right now. Other challenges might have already been issued in other states. They should be issued in all 48. But the most important aspect of this is the first one to get this in open court and to have it ruled on the merit will be paving the way for all of the others to do the same. And that's what we've got going on here in Georgia on the 26th. We will be the first. There's people coming from all over the nation to be a part of this. I'm quite certain that <laughs> the courtroom is not going to be able to handle everybody. There will be overflow. The judge has very graciously allowed full media access to this, and it will be streamed live. Information on that will be available at a website called article2superpac.com. That's A-R-T, the number two, superpac.com. Okay. So get closer to Thursday, meaning probably on Wednesday, people might want to take a look at that, and that way they can get the live streaming that's going to be done. I'll tell you that over the past two weeks, I have been interviewed now three times by local television stations, CBS, NBC, and today Fox just interviewed me. And of the three, the last interview with Fox has the most potential for actually getting forth the message that I've been trying to put out there for almost three years now. You know, typically the news media will butcher and they'll twist and they'll do whatever they can. But I can tell you that the words I used don't allow for that. So I can hardly wait to see what they do with this. So you want people to show up there, Carl? Would you be happy if people came from all across the nation? I would be, but I'm not calling for any special event, okay? If they would like to come and witness history being made, because that's exactly what this is. This is history being made. Never before in this nation's past has a sitting putative president been challenged to appear on a ballot. Never before. Never before has a putative president been brought to court to answer whether or not he is eligible to be on a ballot. This is 
history, and we are going to be plowing new ground right here in Georgia. You've got the powerhouse Obama team that is going up against us, and I've got what I consider to be a dream team of legal help representing me, with lead counsel being Mark Hatfield. you got to remember, this is dealing with state law. We're not dealing with federal issues. We're dealing with state law, and state law is really simple, direct, and very specific. And the Secretary of State can and has kept people off of this state's ballot because of eligibility issues. So it is in the proper venue, and this is a hearing, not a trial. So whatever ruling the judge comes down with, he will then send that to the Secretary of State, Brian Kemp. And then he will be able to either accept or reject that ruling. Who's paying for your legal fees yourself? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. How much has it accounted to so far? I'm getting about 12000 right now, and I've got some people that have stepped up and have been helping, and if anybody that's listening to this would feel like they'd like to help and be a part of this, have skin in the game, so to speak, you can go to my website and donate there. My website is riseupforamerica.com, spelled out all one word, riseupforamerica.com. There's a donate button at the top, and If you agree that this issue is important and needs to be addressed, as I have known it is for the past few years, then please help me because I'm just a small businessman with very, very limited resources, and this has stretched me to the absolute max. But again, the way I look at this, who am I to do anything less? I've pledged my life my fortune, and my sacred honor to this country. And I can do no less than this. And if anybody wants to help and has the same feeling about this great nation, then I seriously hope that they would consider helping and being a part by helping in the funding process for my legal defense. I've got a PayPal button right up at the top, and if you scroll down a little bit past a really humorous little YouTube video that you just saw a few minutes ago, you'll see a place where I put people's names that have contributed. If they want their last name, I will put it there. Typically, I would just put their first name and last initial to keep a modicum of anonymity, but for them to recognize that their donation has been received, I send everybody a personal thank you. Uh, I don't have a canned form letter that I send out because everybody's important to me in this fight. So my address is there. The PayPal button is there. I'm sure there's going to be some folks who would be interested in helping you out, who feel the same way you do about the president or the candidate, whatever you want to call him. And uh, looking forward to seeing how this unfolds. It's something that really, if the judge does rule in your favor, this could really have a dramatic impact on a lot of things, especially this year with the election coming up. Anything could happen. And of course, anything could happen to the judge. Who knows? This is America. Strange things happen in America. Maybe the judge is going to be talked to. Maybe the judge is going to change his mind. Who knows? I don't know anything about this judge. But it seems like whenever something good is going to happen, all of a sudden something else happens. The shoe drops. The shoe drops. Everybody wonders about that. When's the shoe going to drop? And the only thing I can say to that is, again, this is not a federal case. This has to do with state. And the states have their sovereignty. And the feds cannot come in here and tell us how to run our state. That's what this is about. That's why this is so important. And that's why it should be so important to every other state in the nation. Because we are the people who are the electorate. We are the people who vote in the candidate. We elect the candidate. We are the electors. Congress has failed in its duty to vet any presidential candidate. They just don't do it. They can. They did, in fact, attempt to do it with John McCain. And by the way, John McCain was born to citizen parents. And they wanted to say that he was born on American soil by virtue of being born on an American base. And I I take issue with that because he was born in a hospital, not on the American base, in Cologne, Panama. His birth certificate clearly says that. So once we resolve this issue, it's going to be resolved for all future candidates once and for all. We can take a little bit of comfort in knowing that at least this is covered. At least we're going to be putting someone in that office who doesn't have the possibility of divided loyalties. Kind of important to me. Should be important to the military. Carl Swenson, the chairman of the Clayton County Republican Party, Georgia. I want to thank you for the time you spent explaining all this to the listeners. And hopefully it's going to turn out in your favor because your favor is America's favor. And all you're asking is that they abide by the law of the land. That is correct. And I want to remind everybody that even though I am affiliated with the Republican Party, they are not affiliated with this action in any way, shape, or form. This is a private citizen 
four of us actually, bringing forth these challenges, not affiliated with any party. We are citizens of this great state and this great nation. And that's all I have to say at this point, David. Well, hopefully we'll be talking to you after this trial if you're not too busy with the national media. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure it's going to be interesting. Thanks, Carl. All right. You take care, David. You too.